So the dilemma is this. How are artists and creators like us, who are never taught the complexities and insider knowledge of the entertainment and arts distribution business, who take all the risks while the middlemen reap the lion's share of rewards? How do we take control of our artistic destiny, grow an audience of raving, die-hard fans, and manifest financial freedom for ourselves and our families, and yet still have time and energy to consistently release culturally meaningful creations? That is the quandary, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Jason Brenizer, and welcome to Your Phenomenal Future. I want to talk to artists today. Any kind of artist. No, no, no. Not just any kind of artist. I want to talk to... Um, I, want to I want to talk to the people who are born to be artists, who have this thing inside them that they can't deny, that compels them to create stuff. Uh, if you're a musician, whether you're a composer, whether you're doing classical, whether you're doing jazz, rock, EDM, I don't care. If you're an artist and you're making graphic novels or you're doing, um, you know, fine painting or sculpting or, uh, you know, digital art, anything like that. If you are a novelist or a, a writer of stories, screenwriter, I'm telling you all this stuff, right? You need to figure out how to get your stuff in front of an audience. How do you actually build a whole bunch of raving fans? How do you build a network of people who are just going to devour all the stuff that you create? You know, the ones that are going to be your patrons, the ones that are going to, you know, keep you afloat. And wouldn't it be nice to actually be able to communicate directly with them when you have new stuff, right? Not have to go through a middleman to figure all that stuff out. Um, that's that's the big challenge, right? Because you may sit in your studio and create all the most amazing music in the world, and you may uh, be able to put it on SoundCloud now, right? We didn't have that 10 years ago. Um, but still, discoverability, huge problem. How do people find what you create? Um, there are millions of songs on SoundCloud. I don't know the exact number. Might even be billions, but we'll just say millions. That's a lot. It's a lot for people to sift through. Um, you know, you probably can put your style of music and other kinds of things, um, you know, like keywords and stuff. And so if someone does a search that way, they might find a song of yours. Um, if, if someone is listening to, I don't know, something like a Pandora service or, I mean, all of the streaming services have that now where they build you a list uh, of, of maybe new songs so it can introduce you to new stuff you might, you know, pop up on something for the type of music they like to listen to. But still, they know nothing about you as an artist. And that's what the world wants today. Um, it's not enough to create something. They want the personality. They want the story. They want some sort of emotional connection, a deeper connection uh, with you, the creator, and all the other fans that are out there. Or... Um, collectors, if it's art, and maybe you don't want to consider yourself a fan, you're a collector. Um, but whatever you whatever you call them, you got to find them. And there are some pretty amazing ways to do that these days. But um, the overarching way to do that is uh, uh, probably going to sound like a bad word to most of you. Uh, the it certainly did when I started this kind of stuff. That that bad word is um, marketing. Uh, most of us know nothing about what the hell that means. I was, uh, years and years ago, was uh, working as an engineer at, at Motorola, and anytime they talked about marketing, uh, I was like, oh, the people who do nothing. I'm mean, in my mind. I didn't say that necessarily out loud, but it is what I thought. And, um, <laughs> oh my goodness. We, um, we made some amazing products that uh, we, after, after actually getting them complete and ready to take them to market, we said, okay, we've got these products. And uh, all we had were crickets and we were wondering, well, we've got the best stuff out there. Why can't, uh, why can't we sell it? And it's because we didn't, we didn't go out and sell it. We didn't go out and try to let people know what they could do with it. We didn't ask them what they wanted. Even we were just arrogant enough to to make something 
um, uh, and assume that, that they were going to want it. So it's it's a give and take. You've, you've got to figure out what people want and then not necessarily make something for that specifically because I don't want you to bastardize your art. I want you to make what you are compelled to do, what your soul is telling you you want to get done, um, what you want to put out into the world. But it's still nice to know who might just might, might want that and let them know ahead of time that you're working on it and let them be involved in that story and what it's like to create a new album from concept to completion and let them let them see how the uh, the sausage is made that's what we'll call it right if you get on video while you're working on some of your stuff and you give a little update um, periodically then when it finally comes out you've cultivated a group of people that have an investment in it um, maybe this is a group of people who want to learn little techniques that you've got too. other musicians well that's not a bad thing either those people are also going to tell their fans about your stuff if they're involved with it like that so um, this is just the first of many things I'll talk about. I just wanted to introduce to you that as an artist, we can't let others be in control of, of where our art will land up. Uh, land up, yeah. Where our art will land. Um, it is our duty to not just create the art, but also cultivate the relationships and the engagement with the people who would consume that art. So that's what a lot of these uh, little snippets are going to talk about. I will be giving, of course, some deep dives on different marketing techniques, especially uh, around digital marketing. Of course, we can reach the whole world with that. And specifically, how you can use the blockchain, smart contracts, and NFTs to... Um, not just market, but also get your art in the hands of the people who are going to love it and have you get paid directly and automatically. Wouldn't that be amazing to take out the middlemen, to take out the, uh, the record companies, uh, to take out the streaming services and everything from actually having those. So that's it for today. I am finally done with my little drive and uh, hopefully this is helpful. We'll talk to you guys later. Adios from Texas. You are a phenom. A phenom artist, creator, maker, musician, painter, sculptor, writer, storyteller. But most of all, you are a phenomenal human being. Because I know you conquer fear. You defy age and bridge divides. You connect hearts and bring joy. You grow with purpose to heal your community. And you embrace who all of us are becoming. Please subscribe to this podcast or channel to accelerate your success. And please share this episode with three friends who you know deserve a phenomenal future just like you.